is up guys? This is PVM Vertical and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program and today in this beautiful time warp scene you can see that we are going to be leaving Ike. Yep, we've rescued the science and we're going to fly it on back back to Kerbin. So once we stop the time warp we are going to lift off. In the low gravity of Ike that's pretty easy. We're just going to get out into Duna and then we're just going to do a Full on burn right back to Kerbin, or at least Kerbin's orbit. There's a very, very, very low chance of actually reaching Kerbin because we are just randomly going up to the orbit's height. Our plan is, since we have like no fuel, is to get out there and float around a bit, wait for a nice approach um, transition so that we can burn as little fuel as possible and get back home. And as you can see, barely any liquid fuel, barely any oxidizer. We made it into inter, uh, interplanetary space, and we're gonna start. We're gonna try and mess around with the maneuvers a little bit. So yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a maneuver at our closest point to Kerbin, and it ends up working. Yes, yeah, so we got the phase orbit correct. We're just gonna do a little bit of a correction burn, float through space just a tiny bit. And it didn't take us that long. I mean, it took us like three or four orbits around, but that's like ten minutes. So for the fuel we save, it was definitely worth it. So we're bringing our periapsis down just a tiny bit. Because we want to get as close as we can so that we don't have to spend nearly any delta V getting down into the atmosphere. Because once we're in the atmosphere, we're pretty much home free. It's not like it's a moon where we have to land. We just kind of float on down there using the parachute. So we can rescue all the science and Jebediah Kerman. Who's riding right at the top in the um, uh, rescue capsule? The little one man black one. So we're coming in hot. Kerbin is right there. We are approaching at a very low periapsis. So we should be fine, but on the offset chance we didn't burn all our fuel. Because estimations of the Kerbal Space Program are not always right. And in fact, most times they are not right. And that's kind of annoying. Hopefully that gets fixed in a future release. So we're coming up right on our counter back home. Jebediah and all his friends are eager to land, and they do. They're flying over the, I think that's the South Pole, right? Yeah, over a big landmass. They have the landing gear extended because they are going to land right on land. They're going way too fast, but Kerbin's atmosphere is always good enough to slow down. And combined with the parachute, um, they should not have to use any fuel at all, and if any, maybe right at the last seconds. So, we are flying at around 10,000 meters at quite the speed, but not nearly as much speed as what we were when we were interplanetary, so that's good. Kerbin's atmosphere is doing a good job. We will not have to do any litho breaking today, thankfully. 1,600, 500 meters away. 1,000 meters away. Actually, I don't know if that's that's not accurate at all, because the parachute releases at 500 meters, and that said 900, so that means that we're like 400 meters above surface or sea level. Now we're just going to use the last of our engines. Get down down there, and nice, perfect landing. And well, yeah, we ferried some science back. Today was a successful mission. So before we transition over, I'm just going to tell you that the next spacecraft we are launching is going to take up the entirety of the of the rest of the episode, because it is very, very interesting. And if you look at it, yeah, we're sending a Stanford Taurus up into space. Look at that thing. In case you don't know what a Stanford Taurus is, it is basically a space station that rotates, and since it rotates, it makes artificial gravity using centrifugal force, which isn't actually a force, but, I mean, you can feel it, so I guess it really, technically, in space terms, you could call it a force. And we just ditched our first stage there. Second stage has a very much higher thrust-to-weight ratio, enough to power that um six-engine nuclear core up there, which has like 4,000 meters per second of delta-v which is 
pretty OP, if you want to say that in Kerbal terms. And if you're wondering why we're going to the left, it's because instead of making an orbit, we're just going to launch straight into interplanetary space. Because usually, we do a nice right-hand turn and get right up into orbit and then do a, a Holman transfer. But no, we're just going to take a straight shot right out, um, parallel, hopefully, to Kerbin's orbit so that we can launch out at a nice angle to Duna's orbit. But that's kind of not the case, because we're leaning a little bit too far. We're at like 45 degrees, and we're supposed to be going at like, uh, I don't know, like 25, maybe 30. But we're making a maneuver anyway, and we get uh kind of close to Duna, because we are going to Ike with this thing. And uh, zooming in a little bit closer, you can see that the solar panels are being extended, because it has a large array. I don't really know why I put such so many solar panels on it, but they're there. We have a uh, hexa nuclear engine right there, being fed by um, the Taurus itself. Because the Taurus, if you didn't see there, it's not crew cabins. I mean, there's there's enough for like 20 or so Kerbals because we do have some crew cabins, but most of it is fuel. And it's being linked up right to the center stage, which is going to ferry it over there, and then there's a decoupler below that, so that when we deploy it. The only engines that will be on there are the rotational engines, which will keep it rotating and make some artificial gravity. And so, we are getting up onto the place where we're kind of messing around with maneuvers. Because we, we uh, burnt a little bit too much normal, in the normal direction. We didn't go enough prograde, apparently. Because now we're slowing down, we're lagging behind Duna, instead of going before it, or pacing with it. So that's kind of annoying. That's a little bit of a setback. But, I mean, you can't exactly set back a 4,000 meters per second Delta V spacecraft. I mean, it does have six nuclear engines and a ton of fuel in the Taurus section. We have uh, the science bay doors, which I actually forgot to uh, open that at the place, because I already recorded this and I remember, but I when I, I'm going to switch over to that in another episode so I can get the science from that because I for, completely forgot about that science gear. But that's okay. And this thing is actually looking like a formidable spaceship. I mean, look at it. Looks great. Looks like that thing from, uh, from, uh, Interstellar. Or from, uh, what's it called? Oh, uh, lots of spaceships in sci fi movies are rings. If you like it, you should put a ring on it. <laughs> Oh my, I'm sorry, that, that was so bad, that was a bad joke, but yeah, the giant ring ship is indeed flying, and those solar panels are indeed soaking up the sunlight, and, well, I might actually use this again, because this, somehow, I can get a ton of Delta V out of this, I don't know if, like, the, the rocket stages for space planes are glitched, because that's what I used for the ring section, but it seems like the fuel for that is a lot easier to push around with the nuclear engines than an actual fuel tank. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But you can see there at the top, that's the, that's a orange Rocco Max little radial engine. We're going to be using that to get up to speed when we need to start the rotation. Once we get to Ike, of course, we don't want to mess up our trajectory by doing it now. And, yeah, some, some bug was happening there where uh, the, the, um, encounter was glitching out and it, it's doing it again it's kind of annoying slightly but i'm able to mess around with it even with the bug so that's good we're just trying to get as close as we can to ike's little or ike's height because we don't need the aero bike we're just going to try to get a straight on shot to ike like we always do it is the most efficient way of course and so we are coming up actually we are at the burn point. It's just we're not focused on our space, uh, spacecraft right now because we actually, if you click on a planet, you can click on it and you can focus the view. If you focus the view, you can see, uh, when you zoom in, you can see the trajectory that your spacecraft is going to be going. And so that's kind of how I fine-tune my apoapsis and periapsis in maneuvers. So that, that's just a quick little note in case you didn't know that. So we're going to be burning an anti-normal right here. And we are going to go, hmm, we're just kind of messing around because we want to get a nice encounter with Ike, a straight on shot. So we're just kind of scanning the entire orbit because eventually, eventually we have to encounter it. 
and oh, there's an encounter. But uh, I was getting kind of excited there. I was about to start burning, but I didn't notice that we would have to go through the planet to get there. So that can't happen, obviously. So what my plan is, is to basically tone down the eccentricity of that and just kind of, uh, I don't know, burn that and then do another uh, changing burn at the periapsis. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to burn closer to the surface, and when we're there, we can change it. It's going to take a lot more delta V. It may take, like, I don't know, I'm estimating, like, 500 meters per second from what I remember, but it's fine, because we know that this interplanetary ship is a beast, and it has a ton of delta V in it. Change in velocity, that is, if you're a latecomer to this series. Enough energy to get you places. So you can see that this thing actually does have a nice thrust-to-weight ratio, even though it does have a ton of delta V. Stuff that doesn't usually go together. So I'm just bringing my orbit down to a nice OCD level type uh, number. can't remember the exact number because I can't really see in the preview window, window uh, but that's okay. Because we are here anyway. And yeah, so we get to the correction place, and we're just going to burn this way in order to set our course for Ike. So if you remember in the map, we wanted to burn Antinormal, so we're gonna do we're just gonna start that burn here. So we're gonna skip over Duna and do a extremely, extremely inefficient burn this way to get to Ike. Because we are too lazy and we don't want to float around anymore. We just want to get there as fast as possible. And in real life you might want to do this because you might not have supplies for your astronauts to float around for 30 days. And I know in real life they do slingshots and stuff, and they sometimes they do inefficient orbits. I know, like, the trip to Mars is not standard because they want to get there faster, they want to get there slower, more efficiently. So that could be a factor in actual real life space programs. But in Curl Space Program, usually we, we take the least or the most efficient way. But right now we're just taking the speed way. Because, um, we, well, we can. I told you, this, this is a spacecraft that has a ton of Delta V. We do not have to just save it, because it doesn't even have to land. All it has to do is get into orbit, and, well, it has to start spinning. <laughs> That's basically it. So, yeah, we're, in case you didn't know, we are doing this for a contract, because we are saving up for the research facility upgrade that we are going to spend 3 million funds on. That's going to be quite a lot of money. I actually passed up my um, periapsis there. I didn't get to warp. I warped too far, should I say. So, where are I going to end up, uh, I guess, at this height? I guess I was getting a little bit cocky because I had so much delta V in this thing. I think it was actually closer to like 4,500 or 5,000, to be honest. But, we could have easily sent this up on a bigger spacecraft and gotten it a lot further. Might actually use this craft as a baseline for our jewel ship. I mean, that'd be pretty cool. A jewel ship having uh, artificial gravity on it. I want somebody to make a mod. I don't know if any mods that do artificial gravity, but that'd be nice. Because, uh, I'd like to jump around in space. That'd be pretty cool. And, in case you didn't know, yeah, this is pretty much just for show. So we get up into orbit. It's like an 800,000 meter or kilometer can't remember. But we're here. And we get the contract. Eventually it's going to say bing. We get it. What we're doing here is we're just going to detach. All the fuel lines disappear. We're going to time warp so that we can leave that thing behind. And after we're done, boom. We're just going to start spinning. Once you find the right angle, the right cinematic angle, perfect. Okay, so I'm quick safe in there because I was afraid of what might happen if I start spinning this thing, and so yeah, I do. I spin it up. Oh, look at that thing go. Nice. Look at that thing. Oh, if any Kerbals in the crew cabins, they're feeling a nice carnival-esque push right against the wall. Might even be able to do some uh, Kerbal activities like jumping and stuff in there. Maybe eating snacks without the Doritos floating everywhere. I don't know. But this thing... I'm I'm not gonna lie, I like this thing. It's one of the better designs I've done in my career section, the career series. 
I mean, I've made some pretty big things in Sandbox, but this thing, I gotta say, I enjoy it. Look at that. And yeah, we're not using Stability Assist because um, that would stop a rotation, and that, that would stop the fun because more rotation obviously equals more fun. We got the contract, so don't worry. This was, this messing around was not for naught, even though this did cost 400,000 funds to launch. So we barely made any profit, to be honest, but it was fun anyway. We have a higher um, profitable contract coming up, so stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoy this episode of Kerbal Space Program. I did. And make sure to stay tuned, because we have a lot more stuff going on in this series. The series is by no means over. In fact, we have quite a few episodes left. Stay tuned. This is PVM Vertigo. Peace out.